Hello everyone and welcome to this new video of our facts only series. Today we will discuss another water soluble vitamin which is vitamin B12. We'll discuss uh, the chemistry, function, dietary sources, recommended daily intake, deficiency and toxicity if present of vitamin B12 also known as cobalamin. Vitamin B12 is known as cobalamin because there is cobalt in the middle of that very complex molecule that you see on the screen. I am pointing to the cobalt with a blue arrow. Now, vitamin B12 plays a critical role in red blood cell production, metabolism, nerve function, and production of DNA. Now, in order to absorb vitamin B12, the stomach will have to make a factor called intrinsic factor and that is going to bind to vitamin B12 and this complex is going to be absorbed in the last part of the small intestine known as ileum. You usually get B12 from animal sources so they are not good vegetarian sources for B12 so it's in meat poultry, fish, eggs, dairy products. However, cereals are fortified with B12, the same way when we talked about folic acid. So cereals are a potentially good source for folic acid and B12. B12 deficiency can cause GI symptoms like diarrhea, can cause inflammation of the tongue called glossitis, like we saw with folic acid and other vitamins. It is also a cause for megaloblastic anemia, meaning the red blood cells are enlarged. And if you look like in the picture you see on the screen, if you look at the white blood cell pointed to with the arrow, you see that the neutrophils or the white blood cells are hyper segmented, meaning they have multiple segments. So this is called megaloblastic anemia, and you see that also with folic acid. Vitamin B12 is a very important cause for many, many types of neurological problems. It can cause peripheral neuropathy, so numbness, pain, tingling, that is symmetrical in the lower and the upper extremities, can cause progressive weakness, can cause ataxia, which is unsteady gait, uh, that can uh, even progress to uh, spasticity, uh, where there is spasm and paralysis. It can cause depression, it can cause cognitive impairment, and even dementia. Every time a neurologist sees a patient with a neurological condition like the above, they always order B12. Anyone with dementia or uh, neuropathy or cognitive impairment is very easy to check a B12 level because the treatment is also very easy and very effective. We suspect B12 deficiency in anyone who is malnourished, someone who is following a strict vegan or vegetarian diet because B12 comes from animal sources. After a gastric bypass surgery, someone with Crohn's disease, this uh, disease affects the last portion of the uh, small intestine, in particular the ileum, and this is where B12 is absorbed. Alcoholism, a common cause for a deficiency of many, many vitamins. I said that in order to absorb B12, the stomach will have to make the intrinsic factor. So if there are antibodies to that intrinsic factor, you are going to have B12 deficiency, and this is a cause of anemia. We call it pernicious anemia, meaning malignant anemia. Um, in pregnancy and lactation, it's common to see B12 deficiency, especially if the mother is on a vegan or a vegetarian diet. Patients on hemodialysis uh, can lose a lot of water, soluble vitamins, including B12, and all, in all these cases require supplementation. Now, there is really no toxicity for B12, it's water-soluble vitamin, but if people take a large dose, a crazy dose, they can have side effects like nausea, uh, diarrhea. Uh, commercially, as a medication, it's available as cyanocobalamin and in Europe as hydroxocobalamin. The excess is excreted by the kidneys. 
Now, the recommended dose is 2.4 microgram for adults uh, during pregnancy and lactation. Uh, you need a little bit more, 2.6 to 2.8 micrograms. Now, when there is deficiency, we're going to treat with a lot higher dose. So we're going to give 1,000 micrograms. Okay, this is 250 times the usual amount orally. But if the patient has antibodies to uh, uh, the intrinsic factor or if they have uh, problems with their stomach and they cannot produce intrinsic factor, therefore, they will not absorb B12. And we have to give them injectable B12, usually given intramuscularly, um, and we give it weekly. And once the level is back to normal, we give it monthly. Uh, finally, I have to caution against getting B12 for no apparent reason. Sometimes you see advertisement, B12 shots for $10. If you don't need it, don't take it, okay? Uh, B12 is not going to make you more energetic if you're not deficient, and you can easily know if you're deficient by a simple blood test, then don't take it. Uh, this concludes our short lecture on B12.